You can't talk about living a healthy, happy, optimal life without talking about sleep. Early on in my own life, I saw sleep as being something optional and something for the weak. I fell victim to the grind hard culture or mentality advocated by individuals like Gary Vee at the age of 16. And let's just say the negative implications of that weren't particularly great. We're coming to the end of 2020 and we still don't make sleep as much of a priority as other areas of our health and fitness, including body, mind, time, focus, nutrition. Sleep is probably the last variable most individuals focus on when it comes to achieving their health and fitness related goals. To further demonstrate this point, and as Matthew Walker said in the book, Why We Sleep, humans are not sleeping the way nature intended. The number of sleep bouts, the duration of sleep, and when sleep occurs has all been comprehensively distorted by modernity. So what are the negative effects of sleep deprivation? The first negative effect of sleep deprivation is memory issues. Then we have impulsive behavior, anxiety, depression, paranoia, suicidal thoughts, trouble thinking and concentrating, mood changes, weakened immunity, risk of diabetes, low sex drive, poor balance, risk of heart disease, weight gain and high blood pressure. And that is just to list a few. The shorter you sleep, the shorter your life. The leading cause of disease and death in developed nations, diseases that are crippling healthcare systems, such as heart disease, obesity, dementia, diabetes and cancer, all have recognised casual links to a lack of sleep. Matthew Walker, Why We Sleep. I'm sure that's enough to wake you up to the benefits of sleep. If you truly want to optimise your days, weeks, months and years, you need to take sleep seriously. In this video, I'm going to share with you three rules in order to make that happen. Before I do that, let's dive into sleep success by numbers. To tap into the powerful effects of quality sleep, monitoring both your short-term and long-term sleep habits is an absolute key. Besides self-rated sleep quality, many variables of sleep efficiency can be tracked by consumer-based sleep trackers like an Aura Ring, which I'm wearing right here. Aura measures sleep using sensors that gauge body signals, including a resting heart rate, heart rate variability, body temperature, respiratory rate, and movement determine your sleep patterns. So what kind of numbers are we aiming for when it comes to your sleep and the quality of your sleep? We're aiming for seven to nine hours of total sleep time, deep slow wave sleep for 20% of total sleep time, REM sleep for 20 to 25% of total sleep time, falling asleep in less than 15 minutes, little to no nocturnal awakenings, little to no snoring or restless movements during the night, increased heart rate variability, including high frequency components, during the night, including parasympathetic nervous system activation. Daily resting heart rate in the morning is equal to or less than a trended monthly average. Sleep hack number one, hacking light, optimizing your circadian rhythm for energetic days and restful nights. Our objective here is to line your circadian rhythm with natural day and night cycles. Although in modern times, the majority of us spend the bulk of our time in indoor facilities or under artificial light, our physiology is intimately connected with natural day and night cycles. So what is your circadian rhythm? Circadian rhythms are ancient evolutionary biological processes that are linked with the natural cycles of the day. Essentially, when the sun rises and the sun sets. Your circadian rhythm is your biological clock and plays a very intimate role in controlling our physiology, our metabolism, our mood, and also our ability to sleep and regulate our sleep start and end times. The most apparent circadian rhythm disruptions occur when we travel abroad or we travel through multiple time zones or maybe on a transatlantic flight. But in our day-to-day -day lives, in modern day-to-day -day lives, Living in a light polluted environment like we are based in right now is obviously very disruptive when it comes to regulating your circadian rhythm also. Much less severely so, but something which most people neglect or are not aware of. One crucial element of hacking your sleep is very consciously aligning your day with natural day and night cycles, essentially rising with the sun and also going to bed as the sun sets. This in turn regulates and actions the proper secretion of hormones and neurotransmitters like serotonin, melatonin, and cortisol, which play a very important part in regulating our ability to sleep optimally. Blue Blue light exposure in the morning helps optimize our sleep-wake hormones. During the daytime, blue light dominates, which suppresses melatonin production. Melatonin is a hormone which regulates our sleep-wake cycles by signaling to the brain it is time to go to sleep. Melatonin is secreted by the brain towards the end of the day as we approach total darkness. Early blue light exposure can help optimize melatonin secretion and as a result of that, optimize our sleep drive for when we want it to occur, essentially making us want to go to bed towards the end of the day rather than in the middle of the night. So how do we go about eliminating blue light spectrum light in order to ensure we go to bed on time and our sleep is optimized? In the evening, the decrease in blue light exposure is a signal for our body to start producing melatonin and ramp up for sleep. Modern devices such as TVs, iPads, your desktop, your phone, whatever it may be, 
essentially fool our body into thinking it is daytime once again, and therefore increase the production of cortisol and actually minimize the production of melatonin, making it more difficult for us to fall asleep on time and regularly. According to one 2014 study, using these devices may lead to disruption in your circadian rhythmicity. As a result of this, we will experience decreased sleep latency, less REM sleep, and much more of a feeling of morning grogginess first thing upon waking. To put this hack into effect, you can do the following. Refrain from using blue light emitting devices in the evening. Use night mode on the device or programs like Flux to filter out the blue wavelengths in the evening. Wear blue light blocking glasses at sundown. Use blackout curtains in the bedroom to eliminate moonlight and ambient artificial light sources. Sleep hack number two, behavioral hacks for restful sleep. These behavioral hacks may put us in a state of mind and body that is more conducive to restful sleep. These hacks are in part derived from sleep hygiene tips that are an important part of proper sleep routines. Our first behavioral hack for restful sleep is practicing relaxation exercises like meditation and yoga. Relaxation exercises and lifestyle practices like meditation, deep breathing and yoga create physiological changes in the brain similar to that of sleep. Developing a consistent practice and nighttime routine can benefit both sleep quality and quantity. So to put this hack into play, we do the following. Try a seven to 20 minute guided mindfulness meditation or yoga session as part of your bedtime routine. Keep the yoga poses light. While more intense exercise in the early part of the day can facilitate sleep, they may increase cortisol and keep us awake if done near bedtime. Wearable biofeedback headbands such as Sleep Shepherd track brainwaves with EEG sensors and output binaural beats to produce brainwave patterns that are conducive to sleep. Lower your body temperature before bedtime. In addition to light, temperature is another cue the body uses to signal sleep. Before the start of a sleep cycle, our body temperature naturally falls a few degrees. Keeping cool at bedtime can increase sleep efficiency and sleep onset. In order to optimize temperature, follow these hacks. Keep the bedroom between 60 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, that's between 18 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. Take a shower or bath before bed. While it may seem that this would increase body temperature, it actually draws blood flow towards the surface. Here, heat more easily radiates to the environment, lowering our body temperature. If you guys have an environment where you don't have air conditioning available to you, like I do have in my current environment, I'd also advocate opening the windows at least an hour or hour or two prior to bed as well, if you want to optimize temperature. Obviously it's difficult in the winter if you live in Europe because it's more difficult in terms of temperature regulation. Obviously it's being very cold of course, but again, massively advocate that in terms of air quality also. Go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. I cannot stress this point enough. It is so incredibly important when it comes to optimizing your sleep. Consistent sleep-wake routines can be very effective for supporting healthy circadian rhythms. Since we sleep in roughly 90-minute cycles, it can be beneficial to have our wake time reflect an even amount of cycles. When we wake up in the middle of the night, especially in deeper stages of non-REM sleep, we'll experience a greater degree of sleep inertia or grogginess. To put this into effect, we'll do the following. Start the bedtime routine at the same time every day and set the alarm for the same time every Every morning, even on weekends. Additionally, using the bed only for sleep reinforces a healthy sleep-wake cycle and more strongly reinforces the link between the bed and sleep, which may make falling asleep much easier. Sleep hack number three, hacking your sleep with supplements. Dietary supplements can help support the body in the production of sleep-promoting hormones and neurotransmitters like serotonin and GABA. These supplements can be used in conjunction with a wholesome diet to help the body relax and produce brainwave patterns similar to that of rest. In this section, we'll take a look at four supplements that support restful sleep. First sleep supplement on our list is magnesium glycinate. According to the World Health Organization, approximately 75% of the United States population is deficient in magnesium. This mineral is crucial for over 300 100 reactions in the body and plays a very key part in regulating levels of melatonin and GABA in the body. Whilst many forms of magnesium exist, magnesium glycinate is the most bioavailable. Magnesium acts as a mild sedative, increasing deep sleep and reducing the period of time it takes to fall asleep, decreasing nighttime cortisol levels and reducing periodic leg movements like the little flinch we experience when we're often very, very fatigued late at night. How to dose magnesium glycinate for sleep. 200 to 400 milligrams, depending on individual sensitivity and baseline magnesium levels. To maximize the therapeutic potential of a supplement, it can be taken with calcium citrate, which synergizes with magnesium and supports high quality sleep. Supplement number two, L-tryptophan. L-tryptophan is an essential amino acid and mild sedative that acts as a precursor for serotonin and melatonin. How to dose L-tryptophan? 500 to 1000 milligrams, one to two hours before bedtime. Calcium and vitamin B6 help absorption, 
while folate and vitamin C facilitate reaction to 5-HTP, a precursor to serotonin. Adaptogenic herbs like reishi and ashwagandha. Adaptogens help ward off physical and psychological stress and can benefit restful sleep by balancing hormones and our immune system. How to dose reishi for sleep. One to two grams in the evening is the optimal dose for sleep enhancement. Best taken as a herbal extract to maximize the presence of bioactive compounds. How to dose ashwagandha for sleep. 250 to 600 milligrams of the herbal extract taken in the evenings is perfect. So those are the three sleep hacks I prioritize when it comes to optimizing sleep quality, duration, and efficiency. Now let's move into the other variables you might want to focus on when it comes to improving your sleep. First and foremost, you want to be aware of your caffeine consumption and the half-life of caffeine. If you are still consuming caffeine, I definitely advise consuming your last cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever it may be, dark chocolate sauce also, prior to midday. The reason being the half-life of caffeine can span around 10 hours for some individuals, depending on their sensitivity levels. So regulating your caffeine consumption and being aware of it is very important when it comes to optimizing your sleep quality. Another variable to be aware of will be meal consumption and timing of your last meal. If you are to consume a very calorically dense meal, very close to your sleep start time, you'll experience a lack of quality sleep and efficiency and potentially a delayed onset of sleep also. Primarily as a result of body temperature being heightened and obviously your body digesting the food source you have just consumed. Personally speaking, I go to bed at 11 o'clock at night and therefore consume my last meal at roughly 5 to 6 p.m. depending on my day and how much work I have to complete in that given day. My last meal is actually my least dense when it comes to calories, as opposed to my lunchtime meal being the most considerate when it comes to calorie consumption for this very, very simple reason. The last sleep hack I will cover is actually something I've covered previously in this video already, but I cannot stress the significance of enough. It is consistent sleep start and end times. If you're a young individual or any individual watching this piece of content and you're going to bed at 10 o'clock one night and on Saturday evening going to bed at two, three, four in the morning, you will experience very compromised sleep quality for the remainder of that week. The reason being you've caused such a degree of circadian rhythm disruption, your body doesn't know what time it should be going to bed and what time it should be waking up. I cannot stress it enough, make sure you're going to bed at the same time every single day and waking up at the same time every day. Thanks for watching this piece of content. If you engaged with it or found out something new today, please make sure you leave the video a like and a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel of course, and comment any questions you have below in the comment section. If you are, however, a high performing entrepreneur doing six, seven or eight figures with your business, make sure you check out the Peak Performance Program, which is my service, my high ticket service, which we are working with entrepreneurs to optimize their sleep, nutrition, body, mind, time and focus so they can dominate their market and competition in the business space. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm now going to go off to sleep. <laughs> <Cringe>. <laughs>